Merry Go Round Storytelling presents Funny Tales and Fairy Tales with Amanda Kane Smith. Hello, I'm Amanda, and this week on Funny Tales and Fairy Tales, I'm going to tell you the story of Nail Soup. So make yourself comfy and let's see where today's story will take you. Once there was an old tramp walking through a forest. It was the middle of winter and the weather was bitterly cold. The tramp had been walking all day looking for some shelter and now, as the sun set and twilight began to steal away the colours of the day, he began to lose hope of finding somewhere warm to sleep that night. He was about to give up when through the bare branches of the shadowy trees he saw a little twinkling light. And as he got closer, he saw the light was coming from a window in a little cottage. It looked cosy and warm, and wisps of smoke were floating up from the chimney. There must be a toasty fire inside, he thought. How lovely it would be to sit in front of that fire and warm my toes. As he stood there, lost in his thoughts, an old woman, driving a horse and cart, pulled up in front of the cottage. The tramp watched as she got down from the cart and began to carry three large baskets filled with vegetables and meat and other groceries into the house. Then she came back out, led her horse to the little barn next to the cottage, and went back inside. Seeing such a homely scene made the tramp feel all cheerful inside, and with his spirits lifted, he began to whistle a merry tune and walk towards the cottage in the hope of asking for some help for the night. He knocked on the door. Suddenly, the door swung open and there stood the old woman. She looked very cross. What do you want? she said abruptly. I'm sorry to bother you, madam, but I've been walking all day looking for some shelter. It's bitterly cold and my feet are freezing. I don't suppose you have somewhere you could put me up for the night and maybe let me warm my feet in front of your fire? What do you think this is? A hotel? No, no, of course not. I I was just hoping you may help me. It's ever so cold out here and it's getting dark now. I don't know who you are. How do I know you won't steal my stuff? Not that I've got anything to steal, mind you. Well, I can assure you, madam, I am a respectable fellow. I wouldn't dream of stealing anybody's stuff. Hmm... Well, I should hope not. And like I said, I haven't got anything to steal here anyway. I'm a very poor person and there's no food in the house neither. Well, the tramp knew she wasn't telling the truth about the food because he'd just seen her carry three big baskets full of food into the house. But he was in no position to question her. So, instead, he persisted in asking for somewhere to rest his head out of the cold. And after a while, fed up of talking and letting the heat out through the door, the old woman reluctantly agreed to let him warm himself by the fire and sleep out in the barn. Just for half an hour, mind you, by the fire. Then you can go out and sleep in the barn. Oh, thank you, madam. You are gracious and kind. The old tramp entered the cottage, and as he did so, he saw that it was full of knick-knacks and little ornaments. It was very cosy indeed, and not at all bare as she had led him to believe. There was also a delightful smell of cooking and spices. 
he sat himself down on the floor in front of the fire and began to warm up. Steam started to rise from his damp jacket and his fingertips began to tingle as the warmth spread through his old gnarled hands. Thank you, madam. Oh, this fire is lovely. I'm so happy to be out of that bitter cold. Yeah, all right. Don't go on about it. Just sit there and be quiet. The tramp began to feel very hungry as he sat by the fire. He knew the old woman wouldn't be happy to give him something to eat. But, being a very clever chap, he had an idea. You have been so kind to me, madam, he said. I am wondering whether you would let me do something for you in return. Something for me? I very much doubt there is anything you can do for me, she said scornfully. Well, said the tramp, I would like to cook you a meal. A meal, is it? Oh, what a cheek. I've already told you, I've no food in the house, so I don't know what you'd be thinking of cooking. A meal indeed. Then the tramp said that all he would need to cook a meal was a nice big pan and some water. Oh, a nice big pan and some water. Well, if you think you can make a meal out of a nice big pan and some water, I'll get you one. She fetched her largest cooking pot and filled it with water, then let the tramp put it on the fire to heat up. Then she watched as the tramp carefully emptied out his pockets. He had all sorts of bits and bobs in his pockets. A few twigs, a ball of string, a penknife, a couple of pine cones, a handkerchief and a four inch nail. He picked up the nail, turned it around three times in his hand and then threw it into the water, which was now beginning to boil. What have you done that for? asked the old woman. Well, I thought I would make you nail soup. Nail soup? declared the old woman. Who ever heard of such a thing? Oh yes, said the old tramp. Have you not had it before? It's quite delicious. He then picked up a big wooden spoon, gave the pan a stir and tasted it. Mmm, not bad at all. It could probably do with a bit of salt. Mmm, oh, shame. Shame you ain't got none. Salt, did you say? <laughs> well, of course I got salt. I'll just fetch the pot. And with that, she bustled out of the room and fetched her salt pot. She came back in, gave the salt to the tramp, and he sprinkled some into the pan. He tasted it again. Oh, yes, madam. Much better. Lovely. Um. Mm. Only... Yes? said the old woman. Well, I was thinking, it's a shame you ain't got no vegetables. Say an onion, maybe a couple of carrots and a few potatoes. I always think they taste really nice in a nail soup. Oh, really? Well, now I think about it, I may have a few vegetables in the kitchen. I'll go and have a look. And off she went again. She had not been gone very long before she came back in with an onion, two carrots and three potatoes. The tramp chopped them up with his penknife and threw them in. He began to stir the soup and as he did so, the old woman stared at him. She was fascinated and very impressed and was now feeling rather hungry herself. He tasted it again. Oh, yes said the tramp. Much better. 
That's really brought out the flavour of the nail. Mmm, delicious. Only... Yes? Asked the old woman. Well, it's just that I was thinking a little bit of pearl barley would thicken it up a bit. You see, I've used this nail about six times already this week, so it's not as naily as usual. Oh! Oh, I see. Of course. Well, um, well, now that I think about it, I may have a bit of pearl barley. I'll go and have a look, shall I? And with that, she bustled out again and brought back a handful of pearl barley and threw it into the pan herself. There you go, she said happily. Ooh, oh, it looks rather nice. Isn't it amazing what you can make out of an old nail? Oh yes, madam, it is. But this won't be my best, I'm afraid. Not like the night I made nail soup for the king. The king, you say? Oh yes. Did not tell you that I used to work under the king's cook. That's where I learnt the recipe. The old lady was so surprised that she had to have a little sit down in her chair. Ah, good times, continued the tramp. But of course, the king always liked a bit of salted beef in his. Beef? <laughs> well, I never. And you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I've got a bit of beef in the pantry. In went the beef and the tramp mixed it in well with the pearl barley and the vegetables and the seasoning and it really did look like it was fit for a king. Once it had all cooked through nicely, the tramp asked the woman for two bowls to serve it in. Two bowls will be fine for us, he said. Ah, but of course... The king would always like to eat his with some bread and cheese and a nice bottle of wine. Well, that is exactly what we should do, said the old woman excitedly. And with that, she got out her best tablecloth, some bread which she had baked earlier, a variety of cheeses and a nice bottle of wine. She put the tablecloth on the table and placed two bowls, two spoons and her two best glasses and spread everything else out in the middle. The tramp brought the big pan over to the table and ladled out two hearty bowls of soup. It looked fantastic. A fantastic feast, just like at Christmas. And the two of them sat down and ate and drank and shared the most wonderful evening together. The old woman thought the soup was delicious and couldn't thank the tramp enough for showing her his recipe. I mean, it's so economical to make. Just some water and an old nail. <laughs> well, I mean, there are a few other bits and pieces, but it's mainly the nail that gives it the flavour. Oh, fancy the king enjoying such a simple dish. At the end of the evening, when it was time for bed, the old woman insisted that the tramp sleep inside. It's much too cold out in the barn. You'll be far more comfortable in my spare room, she said. The tramp thanked her and helped her with the washing up and as he did so, he carefully removed the nail from the bottom of the pot, giving it a wipe and putting it back into his pocket. They were now both very tired, so the old woman showed him upstairs to a delightful little room with a cosy bed, and as soon as he saw it, he knew he was going to enjoy a most wonderful rest. The tramp thanked the old woman again for her hospitality, and they said good night. Then he lay down on the bed, patted the pocket with the nail inside, and drifted off to sleep.
I hope you enjoyed that story. Did you work out that the tramp was tricking the old woman into putting lots of delicious things into the soup? I wonder whether she ever realises that she has been tricked. Now, I wrote that story based on an old traditional folktale, which is also a variation of another story called Stone Soup. Maybe you could look up that story and see if you can find what is different and what is the same about the two. And then maybe you could write your own version and then tell it to somebody else. All this talk about food is making me feel a little bit hungry. Hmm. Maybe I'll make some soup. Well, next time on Funny Tales and Fairy Tales, I shall be telling you the story of Little Red Riding Hood, which is another one of my favourites. So until then, take care and happy storytelling. Thank you for listening. If you want to contact me, you can email me at mgrstorytelling at gmail.com. I am on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter as at mgrstorytelling and merry-go-round storytelling on YouTube. You can find me on Podbean at podbean.com slash funny tales and fairy tales. Or why not take a look at my website to see what other types of storytelling I get up to, which is www.merrygoroundstorytelling.co.uk. Happy storytelling, and I look forward to telling you another tale soon.